नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रॉम इंडिया गुड डे इफ यू आर इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड लेट गुड नाइट इफ यू आर इन यूएसए एंड वेरी अर्ली गुड मॉर्निंग इफ यू आर इन द यूके सो द होल वर्ल्ड इज अफेक्टेड बाय बाय द कोरोना वायरस एंड each branch of medicine and society is affected so how we as orthopedic surgeons uh, interact with that because in any given general practice uh, scenario at least 25% of the patients are of musculoskeletal problems if not more so what is a pandemic because corona or covid 19 has been described by who as a pandemic a pandemic is when destructive effects of natural or man made forces overwhelm the ability of given area community or state to meet the demands for health care so basically it says that there is no point fighting with your government when there is a pandemic uh, because it is too big now in terms of india we have to see it's a very unique uh, scenario and uh, i thank uh, for sharing this slide with me uh, mr koshan tiwari whose wife uh, dr kushpita tiwari is uh, my uh, orthopedic uh, clinical assistant um and uh, each state in india has a population equivalent of some big countries and and in spite of that india has one of the lowest mortality rate in covid 19 at the moment but going forward is a big challenge for next 3 months so we cannot take it lightly in fact this is the time in india to take it very very seriously so don't shut your eyes ears to uh, any talk on corona now you know let's start with very basics if you are running a clinic or an opd in a hospital uh, how to plan uh, your sitting arrangement so minimum 6 feet of distance between two patients but if it's not possible then make sure the patients are sitting side by side rather than one behind the other why because according to a recent research done in um, uh, netherlands uh, there is a slipstream effect Uh, which covid 19 follows so uh, in fact if you are walking behind somebody you should be more than 13 15 feet away um, and then that uh, shows the speed with which it can actually capture that area so side to side uh, uh, stream does not uh, carry the corona virus as much as the front to back does now that's a new research which has just been uh, published so if you are walking on the road for example or pavement footpath then walk 15 20 feet behind somebody not just one or two meters now in uh, orthopedics one of the urgent problems we deal with is a hip fracture but you see even before this uh, epidemic up to 3% of hip fractures in the uk were treated non operatively and one cochrane review did not find any differences in a uh, death rate between operative or non operative treatment but the clinical results were not so good if the patient didn't have surgery there is a particular score called shift score to decide in the current crisis as to whom we should or we should not operate for hip fractures and these are low velocity injuries that can happen at home with elderly so not going outdoors during this epidemic does not protect one from the hip fractures so if you have any elderly in your family then be aware that they don't fall uh, another thing which is a big uh, uh, take away from the corona situation is the video consultation and uh, Uh, first of all i welcome uh, all of you who have joined from different parts of uh, gujarat india and uh, abroad uh, is professor uh, pr modi on on the board um, professor nilam doshi nilam maheshwari okay fantastic uh, so when you are doing a video consultation keep your written notes and send a copy to the patient afterwards always keep a record of disclaimer and if appropriate a waiver because a video consultation is not sometimes uh, fully able to solve the problem keep a chaperone at either end uh, you know if you are examining a female patient then uh, it might be helpful um, uh, even on a video consultation and uh, take it your video consultation as a composite care model rather than a stand alone one man mission so you may have to supplement your video consultation with home blood test home x rays uh, home pharmacy home plaster or home uh, splints application home physiotherapy service so uh, yeah it's it's not just that you talk to somebody in the video and you are done don't promise or guarantee anything keep 
keep it up to 25 minutes for a new episode of clinical consultation and 12 minutes for a follow up one and sort out any fee payments if you are going to charge any fees before you start consultation now masks are very very important uh, i am wearing a particular mask which is known as a filtering face piece respirator uh, or filtering face piece ffp uh, it is also known as n95 N95 is FFP2. Now there are three kinds of FFP, FFP1, 2, and 3. And uh, in majority of the scenarios, FFP2 is uh, more than sufficient, even in the hospital scenario, uh, like I'm wearing. In, uh, if you are doing a high risk surgery, then uh, FFP3 uh, is, is something which is mandated in countries like UK and parts of uh, Europe and uh, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about it. The first two kinds of masks, the comfort masks and surgical masks, don't offer much protection from corona. Uh, aerosol generating procedures. So, you know, if you are having any surgery uh, where the orthopedic surgeon is going to use drills or uh, some other, Dr. Professor Pankaj Modi, you are most welcome as a, a very special faculty. Uh, Dr. Modi is, uh, is a leading uh, uh, general surgeon, surgical teacher, tutor, professor, and uh, very actively involved in corona patient care at Civil Hospital, BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad, including policy making. Now, so you're most welcome uh, and thank you for joining. Uh, uh, right now, my slide presentation is going on and then in 10 minutes, uh, there will be interaction with everybody. Uh, for aerosol generating procedures, uh, uh, make sure that the hospital or the surgeon has FFP3 uh, mask, which is 90% plus protection. And ideally it should be fitted so that there is no leakage. In the UK, it is mandatory that each and every surgeon who goes to operating theater will have FFP3, for which a computerized test is done to ensure whether it fits properly or not. Because it's not just the quality of the mask, but also how snugly and properly it fits and it's an objective thing it's not how you feel with regard to its fitting uh, however no matter how smart your mask is some precautions are a must wash your hands properly before donning the mask don't touch your mask if you do touch your mask then immediately wash your hands again learn to put your mask on and take it off properly you know do it from behind not from the front a soiled or a moist mask is not generally considered to be protective. Now, if you sustain a fracture, and I've had uh, patients in Ahmedabad, you know, who had fallen at home and uh, I had to get home x-ray done. And then it was a question of how to decide whether they need surgery or whether they are safe for surgery. Now, you know, in your blood test, if your white cell count, a particular part of it is very low, if there is something called a D-dimer, which is disproportionately high, then these patients are at a much higher risk of getting complications after surgery in this current corona climate. So if you are a patient or if you have a family member who is a patient of a fracture and surgery is, is being talked about, then make sure that these blood tests are done first and the doctor is aware of the results and the importance of the results. If the injury is more than 10 days old and the blood D-dimer level is high, then it is absolutely worthwhile considering no surgery. Now, uh, you know, in emergency orthopedic surgery, if you're a patient, make sure you are wearing a mask too, uh, you know, and uh, uh, the surgeon should be wearing a water repellent gown, plastic apron on the top, because not all water repellent gowns are that uh, protective. FFP3, or if not available, FFP2, which is what I'm wearing, with an additional triple layer surgical mask on the top of it, uh, minimum number of staff in the operating theater, and there is preferred spinal anesthesia or regional blocks if you are having an arm surgery rather than general anesthetic because that's safe for you, for your doctor, for your surgeon, for your anesthetist. Uh, now, if you are an orthopedic surgeon, where are you most likely to catch infection from in the corona scenario? The Chinese uh, study on 25 orthopedic surgeons have shown that the most likely place to catch the infection is from nursing home or hospital corridors and in the ward but the surgeon is less likely to catch uh, corona infection from ICU or operating theater. The other two factors which came out in Chinese study were if the surgeon was fatigued and if the surgeon was not wearing FFP2 or FFP3 and was wearing just ordinary surgical mask, even in the hospital corridor, the risk of catching corona was high. 
Uh, now, this has tremendous resource implications for, a, for any country, you know, not just India. For USA, where they are struggling with PPE, for England, they are struggling with uh, PPE. Uh, but the Chinese study of infected orthopedic surgeons pointed this out as a risk factor, that not wearing FFPT even in the hospital corridor was a risk factor. Now, I had to do an emergency operation yesterday, uh, and this is how we protected ourselves. I've got a water repellent uh, gown, uh, leg cover, um, additional plastic apron, uh, FFP2 mask, a triple layer surgical mask on the top, and then a hood. Uh, so it takes extra time to, to put this stuff on and the surgery therefore might last a little longer and we need to tell the patients and the relatives about that. If your family member is a patient and is being transferred to operating theater, then make sure that uh, they don't have to stop in the corridor, uh, holding area or anesthetic room, and the hospital should have that policy. Uh, the patient should be taken straight to the dedicated corona operating, COVID-19 operating theater, social distancing, even in the hospital lift or elevator. And uh, if the patient is not intubated, then they need to wear a mask throughout the surgery as well. Um, Non-intubated patient must wear a surgical mask, disposable waterproof gloves, disposable cap and shoe covers during transport in the hospital. Uh, in the operating theater, as a surgeon, I would use the power equipment as little as possible and at much lower speed. It's like going back to the days of hand drill. Uh, negative pressure if possible, uh, but otherwise high air exchange cycle rate of more than 25 cycles per hour and plan for extra time required for surgery. So, and as you know, uh, handshake is out, uh, even elbow bump is out, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, namaste is in. So all of you have a good uh, night, very good morning, and a good day. And uh, any issues with orthopedic fracture or joint pain patients, we are always available at Sings Hospital. You can contact me through my WhatsApp number 9426913819, which is 9426913819, or my Instagram handle or my Facebook Ortho Dr. Kayun Butch page, or through, or through Twitter, uh, Best Ortho DR, and uh, we'll be happy to help. And uh, namaste. In the end.